Hoops coming your way from the big city here in New York in Madison Square Garden. Welcome to the 2K Sports Classic as part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. And time now for our championship game as Providence takes on St. Louis. Hi everybody, John Chambi and Sean Farnham. Good matchup here. And I think a little bit of a surprise. St. Louis able to get past Virginia Tech. Providence beating Washington. And St. Louis in surprising Virginia Tech. They get a great performance from Javon Best, the transfer from Michigan State. He did a little bit of everything. Yeah, and he's the embodiment of everything that this team has to be in order to be successful tonight. When talking to Ed Cooley, he said, you know what, for St. Louis, they're like an old school Big East team. They want to punch in the mouth, they want to get downhill, and they want to score at the iron. And that's exactly what Javon Best did last night. Career highs in both points and rebounds. And if he can set that same tone, the transfer from Michigan State, he gives St. Louis an opportunity to leave here improbably, by the way, 2-0 in games in Madison Square Garden and champions of the two clay classic. All right, let's check out starting lineup for Ed Cooley's Providence Friars. Kyron Cartwright is their outstanding park point guard. Isaiah Jackson, Alpha Diallo from New York City. Rodney Bullock, their senior leader, and Khalif Young. Meanwhile, for Travis Ford and the St. Louis Billigans, Jordan Goodwin coming off a solid game last night. It'll be DeVell Roby, Javon Best, Jalen Johnson, and another freshman, Hassan French. Here from the world's most famous arena, ready to go as Young and French jump it up. Fight for the loose ball, and Providence controls. There's not many opportunities to win a championship, let alone to win a championship in a college basketball season at Madison Square Garden. Toss inside, and they get the foul. As that'll go against Jalen Johnson, and Bullock trying to throw it down, and it gets stuck wedged between the rim and the backboard. And a really nice job on that opening set to get Rodney Bullock involved. He came into this tournament averaging just eight and a half points per game and then last night a breakout 17 and nine. And that's where his numbers need to be all season long. He, he should be their go to player. You mentioned it last night a couple of years ago. He was the third wheel on a trio that was very talented led by Chris Dunn. Well now on this team he needs to be the lead dog and he's a fifth year guy. He's 23 years old. Goodwin handling here, gives off. He did such a good job yesterday of running some time off the shot clock. Now under 10, here's French. Deflected out of bounds and three on the shot clock. This a little different from the way they went about it yesterday. Well, look, they want to score in that final third of the shot clock. And a big part of it is they have limited numbers on their bench right now. So they get rest at the offensive end of the floor. It's, a, it's part of the philosophy for Travis Ford. He'd like to play faster, but they don't have the numbers. Good win. Hoist it up. Can't hit. And Diallo the rebound, and he gets fouled. And Hassan French picking up a quick foul. Foul trouble was apparent towards the end of the game. And while you look at him, okay, that's just, that's just one foul. St. Louis has to do a good job of staying out of foul trouble. They go to the 1-3-1 defense, which was successful in their opening game. They did not run it last night. They go to it right there, and they get the turnover. Part of what St. Louis did so well last night, they took Virginia Tech out of its offensive flow. They're going to try to do the same to the Friars by mixing up their defense. That one from the corner, and a three will go for Devell Roby. Roby, their senior from Memphis. Toss up ahead. Khalif Young flips it up and in. And Cartwright has such great vision on the floor. Led the Big East last year in assists. Didn't take long to see the big fella running rim to rim, and they feed their big guys when they run and they get out in front. And Young is big, but he moves pretty well. Roby. French spins down low, left hand is good. I really like the way he played last night, and I like the way he gathered himself right there. 
Size-wise, as far as height goes, he should be very comfortable in this game for the Billikens. Hard right, and a quick double team. And now Jackson gets inside, and a good look at it. Out of bounds, and it stays with Providence. You come up, you set the screen, and he dives straight down the middle of the lane. Ducked in with his back to the basket, got his hands underneath it. Felt where the defensive player was, bumped him off of him and able to finish. Nice job. Right, Ray, you mentioned led the Big East in assists. That was fourth best in the nation at 6.7 last year. Cartwright goes to work all the way. Left hand wouldn't go. And a late foul call. And Travis Ford a little frustrated with Hassan French. The drive down the lane. And why he's upset with French. You're like, okay, well, why is he upset with French? Look at how far away from the hoop he was. That's why he was upset with French. He was guarding Young as if he was a prominent three-point shooter. It was prolific from beyond the arc. You got to gap up and give space to a five man that's that far away from the hoop and cheat into that lane to help out on the dribble penetration. Providence, the early lead, just getting started our championship game. It's the 2K Sports Classic for Madison Square Garden. John Chalby and John Farnham. Best the kick out. Roby directs traffic. Shot clock now at six. Roby. Best from deep. Diallo pulls down the board. Good job defensively that time by Providence. Pass to the corner. Jackson. His three wouldn't go. And they get a foul on St. Louis. I think they got Javel Roby. No, nope, it'll be Jalen Johnson. And that'll be his second. And so DJ Foreman will check into the game. Here he comes, the Rutgers transfer. He did a nice job last night being efficient in his minutes. Makai Ashton Lankford. Has checked in for Providence. Yeah, they get a foul on Isaiah Jackson. First foul on the Friars, but they can kind of get a sense of how the officials are calling this game. You've got to make an adjustment as a player. for him early in this game. Roby, the, the senior, started every game last year. Ashton Langford lost the handle for a second. And then Jackson turns it over. Ashton Langford takes it back. Diallo the jumper. That won't go. Into the hands of Jackson, in and out. And now another foul. A sloppy start for both teams. Loose balls and some fouls across the floor. Another one picked up 94 feet away from the basket. But the three-point shot, St. Louis hasn't relied on it much. But in the early stages, they've got two, and they're up by two. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by NBA 2K18. In stores now. Rated everyone 10 and up. And Continental Tire for what you do. Back inside Madison Square Garden for our 2K Sports Classic Championship game. John Shelby and Sean Farnham. We talked about 
you know, foul trouble possibly an issue, but St. Louis, they're thin right now, and one of the things that attaches to that, you know, right now, four unnamed men's basketball players are under a Title IX and police investigation into sexual assault. The assaults occurred September 24th in an on-campus apartment. An internal school investigation is expected to end around next week. So, and again, the school is not commenting on it, but the situation where, for right now, Travis Ford does not have as many players as he normally would ready to play. And obviously very serious allegations. And the, I think the university's approach has been very professional about it. Uh, they have not commented on pretty much anything in regards to it. There's nothing more that, that we have that we can add to you, to you about it other than the fact that there are players that are not participating right now on the basketball court. And in this particular game and how it relates to what we have here, you have the concern of foul trouble because of the guys that are here. Now, they got in foul trouble last night and they were able to overcome it. Yep. Um, and that's, Travis Ford says, look, we're, we're, the train is moving along and we've got games and we've got a chance to win a championship here today. I'm not worried about what's going on that I can't control other than the fact that I've got to get these guys ready to play tonight. So in the early going, Jalen Johnson with two fouls. That is one guy. Is that 1-3-1 one, one again? They mix it up from the man-to-man, -man, they go to the 1-3-1. One, one. First time they forced a turnover off of it. And they get Diallo pushing off. Alpha Diallo. And I remember, you look at this now, you got four turnovers already in the early portion of this game for, Pro for Providence. It's a 6-0 in points off of turnovers for St. Louis. Goodwin, the freshman, feeds inside, Bass kicks out. Bass inside, trying to spin it home, it goes out of bounds. Javon Bass at 22 and nine, both career highs last night. One of their three captains, along with Roby and Aaron Hines. He's like a running back. He sees that, that seam open up, that offensive lineman hole type and he hits it right away. He's very quick and explosive off the wing. It was a hard fall that time, though. Foreman inside, and he traveled. Travis Ford's got a couple of guys on the court right now that are familiar with this court and this area. Rashad Anthony, grad transfer from Seton Hall, and then DJ Foreman, the Rutgers transfer. Well, and Lindsay's checked into the game along with Malik White, who fires and hits. That's a great pass. You've got to look opposite and you got to look diagonally against the 1 3 1 to find the open man. And a good job that time by Cartwright finding him. Well, Miami coming off their win against. Notre Dame, they are undefeated and number three, they're at home. They'll take on Virginia at noon Eastern tomorrow on ABC. Looking forward to that game. What an atmosphere it was last week for game day. And then the Notre Dame contest was dominated, dominated by the Hurricanes. I want to Roby off the mark. Great rebound by Florida, but he trailed. Third turnover on the Billikens. The Friars have turned it over four times. Travis Ford staying with this particular lineup. He's staying with the 1-3-1 defense. They switch mid-possession from the 1-3-1 to the man-to-man. -man. Again, all this is trying to do is to confuse and get Providence out of any rhythm offensively. All right, right pulls up. That won't go. Rebound. Lindsay is put back. 
wouldn't go, but he's fouled. Jalen Lindsey, the senior from Tennessee. Lindsey, a good shooter. He missed their opener with a knee issue. For his cousin, Brendan Trish. Yep. Played at Syracuse. His mom was a great basketball player at the University of Alabama. So Lindsey, another one of these guys that can help them off the bench there without Emmett Holt, who is dealing with an abdomen issue. We well, mentioned how he can help him. 46% from three last season, averaging better than 10 points. So you get that kind of production, take some pressure off of guys like Bullock and Cartwright who are shouldering the load. Freshman Goodwin turns the corner, puts it off the glass, wouldn't go, fight for the loose ball. Anthony pulls it down, and the Billikens set it up. French, lots of the board. And that's just not a good shot by French. Ashton Langford gets it to go. Well done for the young man who originally chose UConn. And then changed his mind and ended up at, at Providence. And before that Minnesota loss, he hadn't lost in over a year. His high school went undefeated. His AU team, Max Rivals, went undefeated. I always like winners. I want to be surrounded by winners. He's a winner. glass and it rolls home. Wow. Aaron Hines, a senior from St. Louis. Look at that. Good one. Takes it away from Makai Ashton Lankford who looks for some help and then turns it over. Hines fires. And we go back the other way, under 12 to go first half, a one-point game. to turn their shoulders to the guy they're guarding to look at the ball, you're winning. And that's what Cartwright did right there. Gave just enough space for Lindsey to dial it in. Now Jalen Lindsey doing a good job coming off the bench. The corner three available, and he knocks it down. Providence by two. your takeaways from the first eight minutes of play a little sluggish running in mud a little bit treading water we got to find our second win uh, to get back to competing at the level we need to compete with with a Providence team settling for a two too many threes on that end we need to get playing downhill in the paint um, you know they've made a few tough shots but we're okay we need to find our second win how effective are, are how confident are you in the one three one you've gone to it early and often here we'll show it off and on we're not you know it's uh it's to change them up a little bit and also give us some rest. We're in a little bit of foul trouble already. Uh, but, yeah, you'll see it a little bit off and on. Thanks so much, Coach. Thank you. Well, Travis Ford used a phrase that you used early, and that is you were talking about needing to get going downhill as opposed to what he talked about, that they're settling for threes, and that's something that he wants to to see change. Well, he knows his team better than anyone, obviously. And, and one of the things that he continues to stress with his team is we're not a great shooting team. So let's not settle for shots that are low percentage shots for us. Let's take the high percentage shots. And sometimes that takes a little bit more discipline in your approach at the offensive end. Ty Ashton Lankford kicks the bullet. Bullock pulls up and hits. Now Rodney Bullock, big guy at 6'8". He goes 225, and he's able to just rise up and knock it down over 
the defender's extended hand. Goodwin gets into the paint, tries to scoop it home and couldn't do it. Now you mentioned He'll go to the line. Partner, you mentioned Rodney Bullock, and he, a good opportunity here. It looks like good defense, right? I mean, they're in perfect position. He just gets them a little bit leaning one way, gets brings the ball down low, and as the hands start to drop, as soon as they drop, he knows he can elevate up over the top and finish. That's an experienced player. So Bullock off to a good start. He's got four. And this is Jordan Goodwin. And he's got four, but he's going to go to the bench because he's got two. And the two beats the four when it comes to fouls. Aaron Cartwright is back in. Lindsay as well. As well on the court, Drew Edwards, who was really crucial in the second half in their win last night. He had 11 points all in the second half. And, and played with such composure, too. Jump stop. Not just lunging and getting himself off balance. He really gathered himself in every shot attempt he took. He was on great balance with his foundation underneath him. Diallo off the glass. That won't go. And Goodwin weaving through traffic finds French. Who spans has it rejected. And they go to the possession arrow. It'll stay with St. Louis, but a great block by Nate Watson. Nate Watson gets up and just basically says, You've got no chance of shooting that ball over me. French spins, and as he spins, all he's doing is Watson's laying there waiting for it, going, Come on, feed it to me, feed it to me. Yes, you did. And he takes it and keeps the jump ball. It stays St. Louis's possession, though. Well, Roby handling here. Swings the best who's got Diallo on. Hines down. Foul on the floor that'll go against Providence. Hines is one of those players off the bench for St. Louis that can impact the game in a very short period of time. He's very aggressive. When you look at St. Louis, you think, okay, Bess, number three, he's gonna get the ball stuck in his hand sometimes and he's driving and coming right after you. Hines will do the same thing and Goodwin. Those are the three players when you're looking at a scouting report, you go, okay. They're the guys we have to stop because if we can get them out of rhythm, I think we're fairly confident that you can you can limit the action that they're looking for from the other players. Diallo rebounds the free throw miss. Three-point game under 10 to go here first half in our championship game. Those kind of passes up over the top allow the defense to recover. Had a good look at it, just a little too strong as it hit the back of the iron. And that's cool, is right. This one does have that old school Big East kind of feel to it. It's very physical underneath. Both teams doing a nice job protecting the paint. That's part of the reason why Travis Ford's talking about his team settling for perimeter jump shots because Providence defense is suffocating underneath. Well, they get best on the travel. Ford. This team came up with a big win last night over Virginia Tech. Trying to get out of New York City 2 0 inside. And Edwards could not get it to roll home. And eventually, a foul called there as they get Javon Bess. As many fouls as we have now, one-on-one -on -one opportunity consistently, and soon to probably be two free throws. It's going to be a long half of a lot of free throws, just based on style of play 
and the way the Providence is looking to try to attack St. Louis. This has some old school Big East flavor to it. Maybe they'll go to six fouls at the half. Or something. Big East did that back in the day. Hines gets that shot rejected. He went down hard. Right, right, kick out. Diallo from the elbow. Got it. That all started because the effort at the defensive end of the floor. And then in transition, the smart read by Cartwright. You talk about old toughness. That was toughness going in the paint. It's nothing as easy around the rim. You know, they watched the film last night. They saw that 44 of their 77 points came at the iron. And Providence doing an excellent job thus far here in the first half, making sure that St. Louis has no clean looks at the rim. They're up by five. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. Thanks. And here at MSG, physical affairs so far. And Providence with the lead against Travis Ford, St. Louis Billikens. 18-13, our score, 747 to go. And this is all about the defense of Providence. If you think about it, two of seven beyond the arc for St. Louis, two of eight inside the arc for St. Louis. On the half, just shooting 27% from the field. Billikens did such a good job getting points in the paint against Virginia Tech. Only four so far in this one. Winding down, Cartwright's got to do something. Cartwright spins inside, pulls up and hits. Well done, Kyron Cartwright. That's experience. That's a guy that's been in this building before. Understands how to read a defense and make a good shot. Two-three zone now by Providence. Ryers on a 14-3 run. Hines from way down town as the shot clock expires. You can't get a much better defensive possession than that for Providence against St. Louis. They didn't give them anything at the rim and then an air ball three-pointer. Meanwhile, offensively, feel the defense spin off and elevate. And Cartwright did an excellent job on that last possession. He's got confidence. He's got that senior kind of confidence that you look for in a point guard that's been around and has gone through the battles that he has. Learned so much from playing underneath Chris Dunn. Goodwood with a takeaway. Freshman right at the bucket, can't finish. But guess who's there for the putback? Javon Bess. Let's see if that can jumpstart the Billikens. Diallo wanders into the paint, kicks out. Lindsay a triple, gets another. Well, Lindsay didn't even catch that ball cleanly, but he still had enough time to get his feet set underneath him and knock down that shot. The second three that he's made in this game. Good job, though, offensively, getting the ball in the middle of the paint and then kicking to the shooter. Branch spinning inside. Won't go against Khalif Young. Jackson, the board. Here come the Friars. Cartwright kicks to the right. Diallo buries a three. Now, he knew exactly where Diallo was the entire time. He lulled the defense with some misdirection. It's like a play action pass in football. Get him thinking, run, and then hit him deep. Providence up by 11. Friars by 11. It is a deep team for Ed Cooley, and it is an experienced team for the Friars. Bullock, Lindsey, and Cartwright. Right now, they're without him at Holt. But three of those four guys making an impact in this game. Ed Cooley 
points out that maybe Emmett Holt is the guy that is as crucial as any of them. Kind of a glue guy for them. Well, at the same time, you look at those other three that are available right now and yeah. what have they experienced? They've experienced three trips to the NCAA tournament. They've never not won 20 games during the course of a regular season. And with that, there becomes a certain level of expectation in your program. With that, you hold your teammates accountable. And with that, you provide the leadership to make sure in your final season, there's no drop off. And that's what Ed Cooley's team is staring at right now in this young college basketball season. Kyron Cartwright, the kid from Compton, California, takes a seat. And here's Makai Ashton Langford. Ashton Langford flips that one up and in. Great lineage of cars. We mentioned Chris Dunn a couple of times. And obviously Cartwright and his success fourth fryer in the last six seasons to lead the Big East in assists. Ashton Lankford is next. Yeah, right. He's next. Providence made their last five shots and starting to take control of this game. That's from way down, Joe. Foreman the put back. That's a big basket, and they needed it. DJ Foreman. Well, the offensive rebounds is an area in which St. Louis feels like it can have success. Last night, Providence gave up 16 offensive rebounds. Good hands by Bess, but he couldn't secure it. And now Ashton Lankford. Now they get Khalif Young. On the foul. Under four timeout, and Cooley and the Friars leading by 11. What if, oh, Dallin, don't let Coach throw it right back to me. I think he's right. You know, I, obviously, I love Villanova, and I know Coach Greenberg just spent some time with Villanova, but you look at the likes of Butler. You look at, obviously, this Providence team is going to be a 20-plus win team this year. I think there's no way they don't get back to the NCAA tournament. The Big East consistently has depth. Creighton is another team to keep an eye on. Seat Hall, obviously, ranked in the top 25 already. For Ed Cooley, he talks about, too, you know, an opportunity to play on ESPN in these events. Five straight events that he's played on during, like, the Feast Week period of time where they've made the championship game. So he talked about he participated in this one, pure and simple, to get ready for the Big East tournament. French, good spin move off the glass and good. Nine-point game. An inside point blank look couldn't hit French rebound. Yeah, be able to finish that one. Too close to miss. Good ball movement. Good win. It's good ball movement when you have a confident shooter from the outside. Goodwin shooting just 8% from three. The Kai Ashton Lankford, the pull up. You see the difference in quality of shot? Well, Ashton Lankford isn't a great three point shooter right now, but he knows that he can get to the paint and, and elevate and finish. Goodwin settled on the kick to try to knock down a three point shot when that is not the strength of his game in his young college basketball career. Lost the handle. It ends up with Lindsay, and now the push up ahead. Friars have been excellent defensively here in the first half. And Jackson gets fouled on the floor. Well, Farnham, your UCLA Bruins tomorrow night in action on the gridiron. Believe it. Number 11, USC. The victory bell is on the line. Pac 12 action Saturday, 8 Eastern on ABC, also streaming live on the ESPN app. That is not Josh Rosen's brother, nor is that Josh Rosen. 
Bruins opportunity to knock off USC and you know on paper it doesn't look good for UCLA their defense has been porous their offensive line has struggled to protect Josh Rosen but in rivalry games you throw those things out the window and you just go after them. and they get a foul on St. Louis so on paper it doesn't look good in reality it might not look good either okay I, I'm, I'm but I am optimistic. Okay. You know, there was a time a couple years ago, Carl Durrell, I think, got 13 to 7 victory over USC when they were ranked in the top 10. And UCLA was nowhere near it, but their defense stepped up to the challenge. It's like Kenny Bain says, games aren't played on paper, they're played inside TV sets. That's true. And we get to talk about it. Ashton Langford backs it out. Providence leading by 11. Splits the defense, hangs, and hits! What a move! But Kai Ashton Langford absorbs the contact and gets the and one. Watch the ability to split the double team. Shields and protects. And then the touch. He is such a talented player, and what a huge get for Ed Cooley late from the deep commitment to UConn. Played at Brewster Academy. They went 33 and 0. Played for Mass Rivals, undefeated. Was ranked 36 on the ESPN Top 100. He's got Providence last seven points, and this is the Friars' largest lead at 14. Hides from way deep. And they get a foul inside. That'll be on Alpha Diallo. So Diallo picks up number two. And Bess at the line. Going to one spot. Diallo rebounds the miss. Ashton Langford toss up ahead. Watson hangs and hits. How about the big guy running the floor? And, and you know, we saw Cartwright do that earlier in the game, throw ahead to the big, and now you see the freshman, Ashton Langford, do the exact same thing. It's in the system, it's how they're taught. And they tell their big skate, get out and run. Our guard's responsibility is to feed you the ball when you're out in front. Ashton Langford did a nice job seeing the floor and throwing it ahead. And a three point play for Nate Watson, an 8 0 Friars run. And they have broken this thing open. Our championship game, the 2K Classic, here at MSG. Goodwin inside, hangs and hits. Jordan Goodwin, a guy who could do a little bit of everything, and a big recruit. 55 the ESPN 100. And that rattles home a three for Malik White. Everything going Providence way. And that pretty much sums up how the first half has gone. They've got the balance, they've executed better offensively, and their defense has been fantastic. Turnover, and yeah, the Friars will have the basketball to finish the half. Ed Cooley's team in front by 18. And I think you'd have to say that when you look at the way things have changed for St. Louis, the Providence defense has affected things more than anything. Travis Ford's team in the first half of this one they have had a difficult time getting in sync offensively for Providence. Getting help from all over. Kai Ashton Lankford, who has scored nine in the first half. Lindsey Diallo and Malik White. Three of those five guys are bench players for the Friars. So a balanced attack for Providence. And Drew Edwards and company. They've given them help off the bench. And Cooley said, I have a really deep team. And probably playing too many guys. 
first half. Clock winding down. Ashton Lankford gets into the paint, shoots and hits! A great move once again by the freshman to get in the paint and a fantastic way to end the first half in what was a very impressive performance. He's got great hair and he's had a great first half. 11 points from Akai Ashton Lankford. Standing by with the head coach of the Providence Friars here, Sean Farton. Coach, last night St. Louis scored at will in the paint. You guys turned off the water in the first half. You haven't allowed them to get inside. How happy are you with your defense? You know, we're dialed in, we're locked in. You know, they're following a scout report. We know that they really dominated the paint yesterday on their dribble drive. We want to try to shrink the floor and make it a tough twos game. Coach, you're going to be back in this building towards the end of the year. How valuable of an experience is this for your team to play on this floor in this building in preparation for later on down the road? It's really good for us, especially our young kids are getting a lot of playing time right now. This is a great place to have a conference tournament. I just hope we can continue for 20 more minutes to play well. All right, go get to him, Coach. Thanks. You know, one of their young guys, Makai Ashton Langford with 11. You know, the Friars in control as they lead it by 20. Back to the studio now, Chris Cotter, Dale Cuff, and Seth Greenberg. How sneaky is Farney getting out there from behind the table? That's good work, man. Welcome back to the 2K Sports Classic as part of Feast Week presented by Lowe's. And back here in New York City from Madison Square Garden, we get ready for the second half of our championship game, and it's Providence leading by 20. Hi everybody, John Chomby and Sean Farnham here at MSG. Our championship game in Providence has really asserted its will and especially at the defensive end, things have gone really well. And then on the other end of the court, they've been efficient. They've been efficient. And, and remember, Ed Cooley told both you and I, this is the deepest team he's ever coached to Providence. And where do you see depth and production off the bench? And that's the one thing that has stood out so far, not just here tonight, but also last night. But tonight, they're trying to take it to another level. 26 to five advantage in points off the bench. When you can be a head coach and look down and bring guys in and there's no drop off, that's when teams can start to go to the next level. And what you're seeing from Providence tonight is that Ed Cooley believes in this group, that he brings off the bench, and they're productive. Well, it's 11 points from Ashton Langford, five from White, seven from Lindsey, three from Watson. They have all added up, and they've helped this team, in particular, Ashton Langford, extend out their lead. Well, Javon Bess for the Billikens coming off a career high in both points and rebounds, 22 and nine. And he has been held in check. Four points, two boards so far. What can St. Louis do here in the second half to get back into this thing? Well, one one thing you got to sure up your defense and get some stops because you can run and transition, hopefully, and push it and try to get to the rim. And that's the best and easiest way to score. And when your opponent's shooting 63% for the first half, you're taking it out of the net a lot. Offensively, stop settling. Now they're allowing the pressure of Providence to disrupt them and push them further and further away from the basket. Nice shot by Alpha Diallo to get from New York City knocking it down. He's got a lot of family here watching him play. There was three possessions towards the end of that first half where it was well beyond NBA, NBA range. Three-point hoists as the shot clock was expiring. That's not good possessions for St. Louis. Goodwin fires one up. And a rebound yanked down by Bullock. Good look inside. And Young missed the bunny. Khalif Young point blank and couldn't hit. Goodwin and a rejection by Young, but they get the foul. I think they just got the defense. No, they said out of bounds, no foul. Okay. Well, here's what I like about that play, though, is Young didn't put his head down and not get back in transition. Now, obviously, that is a clear finish. You've got to be able to make that one. Young didn't, and he gets back and gets the block, and now that leads to the turnover. Diallo reverses, nicely done. The little things that, that can separate you, the hustle, the change of ends, the not letting the last play carry over and impact how you play the next. Johnson can't hit. Young fights for the loose ball and ends up with French. And then eventually Jalen Johnson able to draw the contact. 
And they get the foul on Khalif Young. Thank you. It's number two on Young. St. Louis shot just 31% in the first half. And again, credit Providence and their outstanding defense. The lead, the lead has ballooned to 24. I love what Ed Cooley said at halftime when I went over and spoke with him and asked him about playing in this building. You know, there's no doubt that this is trying to replicate what they're going to see during Champ Week in March in the Big East Tournament. And for his young guys, yes, it's a great experience, but also for his older guys that are in new roles, or roles that have been abbreviated and changed from last year, it's getting more comfortable in those roles in this building. They stay at the same team hotel. They try to keep the same schedule as far as when they practice, when they eat. Yeah, so come March, it'll all feel very familiar. They got Javon Bess with his third foul. <laughs> well, look, trying to beat Jackson. That one deflected, redirected, and it ends up the Billy Kings. Let's see if they can get something going offensively. It's not an overly skilled offensive team. I mean, last night they were methodical in the way they carved up that Virginia Tech defense. Now from downtown, and Bess buries a three. A good shot that time by Bess, but that is not their offense. And they're playing too much east west and not enough north south. You've got to get downhill, you've got to start getting a piece of the paint in order to be successful long term for St. Louis. They're just not a good shooting team from beyond the arc. It's not their strength. Bullock fires and hits. Bullock's first three, and he's got seven points. His own guy that knocked him over. Well, that's a big foul, the third personal foul on Bess. And he'll come out of the game. The Travis Ford is a little frustrated with the fact that they called that on Bess when the bullet got knocked down by his own man. Diallo pushes it into the front court. Diallo, good look. And the Friars continue to push. So Betts will take a seat. He's got four fouls. Mr. Travis was talking about the fact that Best didn't hit him, and no. he's right. Yeah, I mean he's 100% right, and that's a missed call that impacts. St. Louis at both ends of the floor. You take off their best offensive player and a very solid defense player, but by far their best offensive weapon. And you take him out of the game when there was absolutely no contact from him at any point in time. dominating this game. And just starting to slip away even more so than what it was at the break. Providence's energy level is at a high, high clip right now. Defensively, their focus, attention to detail, active hands, deflection, steals. A 
This one quite similar to what we got in game one of our doubleheader. Virginia Tech just put it on Washington. They did it a little bit differently. Ahmed Hill and Justin Bibbs were so good for deep. Look at this Providence team team, this challenging schedule. They played Minnesota right before the game. They took their first loss. Beat Washington last night in control of this one so far. And you come out of it, you play a Belmont team that has beaten Vanderbilt and Middle Tennessee in back-to-back -back games. A very good Belmont team that's very disciplined and well-coached. Rick Bird, fifth active amongst head coaches with career victories. Ed Cooley can't look ahead. He's going to keep it right here. He wants his team to remain focused. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by Lowe's. Hurry in today for huge savings on all things winter. Go back here, Madison Square Garden, as they honored all of the captains, the honorary captains for the Wounded Warrior Project associated with the four teams. And the 2K Classic benefiting Wounded Warrior Project is celebrating its 23rd anniversary this season and the 20th at MSG. The 2017 2K Classic marks the fifth year that Wounded Warrior Project is the beneficiary of the event with the mission to honor and empower Wounded Warriors to encourage warriors as they adjust to their new normal and achieve new triumphs. For more information about Wounded Warrior Project, log on to WoundedWarriorProject.org. And we talked about this, uh, and it's such a great program uh, that gives back to our men and women of the armed services because it's not just about the scars you can see on the outside. Sometimes it's the, the mental scars that have been left from representing our country and keeping us safe and sacrificing so much. Not just their, their potentially their lives, but time with their family and their friends during the holidays as we get into that portion of the calendar year. And their children and missing so many different things. And I've got family that's been in the military. And the utmost respect for all of our wounded warriors. I was proud to be part of ESPN's coverage two years ago, the Invictus Games was designed by Prince Harry for all the wounded warriors from around the globe as they compete in Olympic style sports. I did the wheelchair basketball championships. The United States won by the way. I just got that last foul on Alpha Diallo. And he will come out. Diallo now with three fouls. St. Louis basketball, 15-20 to go in this one, and the Friars leading by 27. And Roby aggressively to the rim, and he draws the foul. And this time they get Makai Ashton Langford on the foul. And right now with Bess on the bench, you're very limited as far as offensive options go. And that's why I think even more so now, force the action, get to the paint. As aggressive as Providence is playing, and the way this game has been officiated, you're probably gonna draw fouls and get to the free throw line. Manufacture points for yourself. Let me ask you this, and not I'm not in any way saying that I mean, they got a, a big hole to climb out of. It's 25. But what's the point of having Bess on the bench with four fouls when you're down by this much? You're saving or guarding what? I think he's probably just trying to get him to the 12-minute timeout, see where the game stands at that point in time. But I'm saying, like... I understand what you're asking. Yeah. Uh, but I think if he goes out now, you kind of cool him off a little bit. He's upset. He just had a foul called against him that he knows wasn't actually a foul. So mentally, is he on edge? Can you calm him back down and talk to him so that he understands how he has to play? Wow. Malik White from way downtown. And Malik White had a great game last night facilitating. Six assists, zero turnovers, and that one was a deep, deep shot. He's got a complete game to him. Johnson shot contested. Good win the rebound, but they get the foul underneath. Shot clock winding down, and oh boy. That's Steph Curry range right there. 
That's beyond beyond <laughs> the NBA range. I don't know why you would pick up your dribble there if you're Ashton Langford. Jackson feeds Bullet, flips it up, flips it in, and one. A good job breaking down the defense on the drive, the flip over. Bullock slips behind the back line. Poor awareness. And again, that comes when you're watching the ball and not having awareness of where your man is. So now, not one but two different Billikins with four fouls. You got Goodwin and, and Bess, two of their best players. In all Providence here as they lead it by 31 in our championship game. Johnson. And Foreman fighting for the loose ball. They get a foul underneath. I think that's going to be on Providence. Yeah, it'll be on Isaiah Jackson. That'll be his third. Jackson will come out. Drew Edwards will check in. Fryer shooting 65% from the floor. Meanwhile, they've held the Billikens to 27%. This has gone as well as Ed Cooley could have hoped. Yeah, you're right. I still would say, for as much as we focused yesterday on Virginia Tech's offense, the most crucial part of that game for the Billikens was St. Louis running it offensively. They ran it so well that that just dictated the entire game. It 100% dictated the game. In fact, Coach Ford said at shoot-around that he was impressed with their sustained competitiveness their offensive pace allowed them to rest players and said that, you know, they took Virginia Tech out of any tempo and flow offensively. Yeah. Now, the carryover would be able to do it in back-to-back -back nights. They have not. I mean, everything they did right last night has not gone right tonight as Providence has been able to slice them up and get whatever they want, seemingly every possession. P.J. Form in the bucket. basketball and Ashton Langford didn't really have a good clear idea of what he was doing on that offensive possession dribbled himself right into trouble and gave himself no outlet with the shot clock winding down point guards got to understand time and possession how much time is left on the clock do I have a clean look if not can I facilitate one Hines inside left hand is good Partner, that might be the first time all night long that I've seen St. Louis be able to rip through on the perimeter and get a straight line drive to the rim. Yeah, it really is the first clean look they've had on a, on a drive to the bucket. That's a travel again. Kai Ashton Lankford turning it over the last couple of possessions. But still, it is all Providence. Our tour guide for Madison Square Garden, Sean Farnham. Farnham around the garden. That's who we like to call it. That's coming up. If there was a time where boxing was the preeminent sport in our nation, and a big part of it was guys like these guys, Ali and Frazier, the fight of the century, March 8, 1971. You think about the great fights that we've seen in the last couple of years, and I'm not talking about McGregor versus Mayweather. I'm talking about actual boxing matches. None compared to the showcase of the fight of the century right here in Madison Square Garden. 
so many great events here at MSG. And yeah, you're right. Back in the day, boxing was a was a big part of it. People stopped everything they were doing. I mean, as much as we talk about the NFL and how the NFL is, you know, the the major thorough thoroughbred of of sports right now. Boxing was that at one point in time in our country. Think about that fight. Ali's first loss. Roby might have taken an extra step there. We'll go the other way. Friars basketball. Well, Miami is unbeaten. They are ranked number three. And the Hurricanes fresh off their win against Notre Dame. Coming up tomorrow at noon Eastern. It'll be Virginia and Miami going head to head on ABC, also streaming live on the ESPN app. Can you imagine if Tess rocked the turnover chain? I just think about that. Tess in the booth with the turnover chain. You like it? It could happen this week, and he's down there. Well, I mean, he knows people. Yeah. Good hands. I mean, I saw Feinbaum wearing it. Hines kick out. Johnson short. Cartwright kick up ahead. And that one off the foot of Hines and out of bounds. When people think about MSG and when we think about this building, there's been multiple locations for the guard. Three to be exact. I feel like I've gone on a history lesson the last two days walking around this building. Yeah, I mean, I couldn't believe you had never been here before. Now there's Travis Ford. You see him wearing the the orange ribbon there. And remember, Travis, of course, spent eight years as a head coach at Oklahoma State. And today, it was six years ago today that four people perished in a plane crash, including Kurt Butkey and Miranda Cerna. Butkey, the Oklahoma State women's basketball head coach. Miranda Cerna, an assistant coach and two boosters. And so that orange ribbon dedicated to remembering the four. They actually, yesterday in Stillwater on campus, they had a dedication uh, to a piece to remember those four people that that died in that plane crash November 17, 2011. And Kurt Bucky was a good friend of Travis Ford's while they were there together. Anthony knocks down the free throw under ten and a half to go. And it's a 24 point game. White hits another. He's got some range to him. Malik White, a sophomore from Richmond, Virginia. There he lists his favorite NBA teams. He has the Knicks down. He has two teams. He has the Knicks and the 76ers. So being a Knicks fan, I got to imagine every time you step out on this floor, it means a little something more. Watson inside, air ball. Roby, a little Euro step, gets fouled. And he'll go to the line. People are excited about the Knicks right now. And there's a little more buzz in this place with Porzingis playing so well. First time in a while. Hey, think about this organization and, and its rich tradition go back to the 1970 NBA Finals and of course for me you think about the tunnel now that tunnel used to lead all the way to the floor it was where the players would come on and off and Willis Reed came out of that tunnel back in game seven of the 1970 NBA Finals and not only that a little history on that tunnel today partner it November 17th 1996 you know who walked out of that tunnel for the first time Rocky Maivia you know who that is the Rock the Rock made his professional wrestling debut at summer at the Survivor Series 
this very day, 21 years ago, nobody would have thought when he walked out with blue streamers all over him that he'd become the icon that he is in sports entertainment. And you smell what the rock is cooking. Yeah. Feet inside, Watson. Short on that shot. Knocked away, Anthony comes away with it. Are you a wrestling guy? I'm all over the place. Yeah. Oh, I know you're all over the place. I'm familiar with your work. <laughs> Hines, that's off the mark, but he'll go to the line. I dabble everywhere. My kids love it. You're high energy. I try from time to time. I try to play with as much as much passion as Providence does at the defensive end of the floor, partner. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> And Young and Diallo in as Edwards, Lindsay, and Watson. We'll grab a seat. The thing about the efficiency we've seen out of Providence at the offensive end of the floor tonight: 16 assists on 22 made field goals. Last night they assisted on 88 percent of their made field goals. This is a team that really will turn down one to find a great shot. That's an example of it right there. Khalif Young got himself in a good spot, and now the Friars back with a 26-point advantage. Diallo's proven over the last two days to be a very capable and willing passer when he gets the ball in the middle of the paint. Best back in, knocks it down. Yeah, always under control. Alpha Diallo. That one knocked away. Cartwright looking for some help. Finds it, gets the bullet, hangs and can't hit, but foul. Well, there's no question, Providence has a lot of quality pieces. The guys that serve different roles. And what does that say about Minnesota? Yeah, right. And again, Ed Cooley raved about their team. And the job Richard Patino does there and raved about Jordan Murphy said he is the best player that we have coached against since we've been at Providence or at least played the best. And that's saying a lot. Yeah, it is. I mean, they've seen a lot of players. And one of the names that jumped out in terms of, you know, who do you compare him to? One of the guys you compared him to is remember a former Friar Ryan Gomes. Yep. Spinning inside, Roby had it blocked, and then a foul underneath. As that'll go against Javel Roby, Providence in our championship game, and Cooley's team up by 25. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by NBA 2K18. In stores now, rated everyone 10 and up, and Progressive Insurance. Your first round pick for car insurance. Get to the inside the play driven by Continental Tire Partner. Watch the execution here. I love this play. This was from earlier in the half. Diallo's going to shape up on that side, the strong side. He's going to come all the way over to the weak side. What that's going to do is going to force a miscommunication, and Bullock is going to run back off to the strong side. He's going to have a wide open three coming off of Young's screen. Watch this. No communication defensively. Boom. Right there. Three point shot. Great execution by Ed Cooley's team. Friars have run good offense tonight. Made 18 of their last 23 and shooting 64% overall. Second game in a row, by the way, they got great production off their bench. Already 34 points tonight off the bench and 16 points in the paint given up by Providence. And I don't see that changing. I mean, I think that this should be a team all year that will get help from the bench. You got to hang your hat on the defensive end of the floor, which they always have. They've always been a good defensive team. Compete down here and then trust your teammates and have balanced scoring. And that's what Providence has done in the two games they've played in this building. Stop. And 
Roby couldn't get it to go with the putback for DJ Foreman. And that's where they've got to clean it up. 15 offensive rebounds in this game. In fact, 15 <laughs> offensive rebounds, only 11 defensive rebounds for St. Louis. Good look, Bullock. Anthony knocks it out of bounds. It'll stay with the Friars. 15 of the 42 St. Louis points, or 44 St. Louis points, excuse me, have come via the second chance. If you take those points away, your first possession defense has been really strong. And it may not be a difference in tonight's game, but it could be a difference for Providence, especially in the Big East. Right step back, jumper is good. The kid all the way from out there in Compton, California. In Southern California, he's made his way to Rhode Island and found a home. He's turned into one of the best point guards in the country. You asked Ed Cooley yesterday, you know, where do you consider your recruiting base? And he goes, anywhere where, the, where they like Providence basketball. Right. And that includes California. And a finger roll wouldn't go. And they'll set it back up. I think that was a great answer, too. You know, some, some people go, oh, we got to build a fence around here. We got yeah. to sure this area up. For Providence, it's, it's finding the right guys that can play for Ed Cooley that are tough physically, mentally. They're smart. They're unselfish. They want to give it to their teammates. Make them better. Bat launches. The rebound pulled down by Malik White. Yeah, the court now you got California, Canada, New York, and two kids from Virginia for the Friars. Diallo, a little floater, and that'll go. Alpha Diallo with 11. They can't leave the ball, though. And Hines pinched in and then left the ball and created a lane. 5.39 to go in our championship game. And the Friars in control. All right, so you got your Feast Week Dream Games. And, and this is the brackets. If they held true, yeah. don't adjust your monitors. That's not an Elite Eight. That's just the high quality of basketball games that you could potentially see in the next week on ESPN. Arizona versus Nova. Number one versus number eight in Duke in Florida. Michigan State versus Carolina. Wichita State versus Notre Dame. And those are all four different tournaments. Obviously, PK-80 is the same location, but different brackets. Uh, but if the brackets hold true, I mean, we talk about all these great matchups in football. Uh, basketball is feeding you, super feeding you in this early college basketball season with the potential of some great matchups where you're seeing ranked top 10 opponents going against each other early on this season. French inside gets the deuce. Set the shot clock. So now to 27, and Edwards will inbound. And you'll be the advocate. Yes, I will. Invitational down in Orlando, and the potential championship matchup that you could see down there could be Missouri, especially if Michael Porter Jr. returns and his status is still uncertain. They took a loss last night to Utah against West Virginia, which would be the second matchup that they will have versus an SEC team. Kyron Cartwright knocks down the three. They're nine for ten for three. French loses his dribble for a second. Shot clock at five. Got to go. Bess gets bailed out by the foul. All right, one last reminder. Tomorrow night, it'll be USC and UCLA. USC ranked 11 against USC. The victory bell is on the line. And it comes your way at the Coliseum. That kid needs to come out of his shell a little bit. So introverted. I don't know anybody like that. 
No, that's not my son. What were you like as a kid? Were you like that kid? Do you want to throw him back on camera and see? Yeah. <laughs> I'm picturing you with that giant bowl haircut. Oh no, I didn't have I didn't have that that kind of flow. No. No, there was no flow to Farney. I kept the lid tight. I like in the late stages of this game that we're talking third person. <laughs> oh, we are in New York. It reminds me of Seinfeld. Jimmy <laughs> likes Elaine. <laughs> Jimmy's shot was going to him. And the travel turns it over. And that football game, though, between USC and UCLA, it, you got two of the best NFL potential prospects there. Now, there has been a lot of talk about Sam Darnold coming back to the college game next year. Not wanting to play for the Cleveland Browns. I would love to watch that game with you and Aaron Boone. I have watched a USC game with Aaron Boone that they have lost, and it is painful. Well, I think we should get that done. We have the powers to be to make that happen. It could be like an ESPN.com exclusive. Bullock from D gets it. And the lead back to 30. Booney's been a little busy. Indeed. French inside feeds form and spins it up and in. Very impressed with Providence. Uh, you cannot understate the high level of play in which they have brought over two days in this building. And for Ed Cooley, everything that you hoped to get out of this experience you have gotten out of it you're up 28 with under four left to go closing in on the two clay classic championship in the day as a square guard uh, you know i walked all around the building i could not find that anywhere all right we'll get to that in a second and now <laughs> for our player of the game it's brought to you by 2k and it's rodney bullock you know, I said before this tournament started yesterday evening for their game that he needed to step up his play. He came in averaging just eight and a half points per contest, has 15 tonight, had 17 in the first game. And that level of consistency, if he's around 15, 16 points per game, Providence is so difficult to beat. And he has to be willing to step outside of his comfort zone and be the go-to guy offensively on a consistent basis for Ed Cooley this year. They've had it all going their way tonight. Coach Greenberg, I'm sorry we didn't find. I looked. I did see some fairly Dickinson stuff, and then I did not see Coach in any of the pictures. They had hair here. back now. Yeah, that's probably why I didn't recognize him. His hair was like the kid wearing the uh, the Josh Rosen jersey. Goodwin flips it up. Tip wouldn't go. Fight for the loose ball. And Goodwin gets that to go. Goodwin looks like he's got a chance to be a, a nice player, a guy who can do a little bit of everything. Well, he, he very similar to Marcus Smart. Uh, and I actually was able to find Marcus Smart's numbers for his first three games at Oklahoma State, played under Travis Ford. And then you, you compare them to what Goodwin's numbers are, and they're very similar. I mean, shooting wise Marcus Smart could not shoot it from beyond the arc early in his career at Oklahoma State but was able to fill it up in fact Goodwin is actually averaging slightly higher in the rebounds and assist categories he's averaging 11 points per game Marcus Smart averaged 13 points per game so not all that difference between the two and when you look at the makeup of Goodwin and his stature you can understand why that comparison is made by Travis Ford. Go. Yeah, the Friars about to collect a, a championship in the 2K Classic. Johnson inside. A 
Show coming up tonight, 1 a.m. Eastern on ESPN. Don't miss the next edition. Sports Center with Linda Cohn and Stan Barrett. He'll answer what's changed for LeBron and the Cavs. For the Lakers, better off with Lonzo coming off the bench and with one more race to go. What about Junior? And how he's feeling about retirement. It's all coming up. Sports Center with 1 a.m. You put any stock into the Warriors losing and blowing that lead last night in Boston? Like how much are you putting on that? As far as like, do you like, do you think like, they are? No, I mean, you put the Celtics and go, man, they're on a streak right now. Kyrie's doing a great job. I mean, here, here they are. They're the favorites in the East. Are you ready to go there yet with the Cavs struggling the way that they have? Celtics are elite defensively. I like them. I, I still would put the Cavs as my favorite to get to the finals again. You? I agree. I mean, look, regular season games are regular season games. Playoffs are something different, especially when you have to face them for seven games. And you're changing locations and the familiarity between the teams. And as long as LeBron James is on the Cavs, and you're looking at a Cavs roster right now without Isaiah Thomas, and what is IT going to look like when he comes back? Brad Stevens is as brilliant a coach as you'll find. And again, at the defensive end, they they are tremendous. Lob and the throwdown to Jour Dickens. The freshman center get into play in Madison Square Garden. Able to catch a lob for the dunk. That's pretty cool. Kid from Virginia. I mean, you know, a red shirt is something that they probably still look at a little bit, but with the uncertainty with Emmett Holt, I think they're not entirely sure in terms of being up front and what they, they want to do, but they like his future. Uh, and you can see why. Got great athleticism, good length on the back line of your offense. Young talents only 220 pounds at seven feet tall. I mean, he's going to fill out over the next two years. And you can close your eyes and imagine how good he will be as a junior. Tom Planick is checked in along with Andrew Fonts. And on the St. Louis side, Marcos Pismitis. Planick inside, rejected by French. Picks it up, reverses, it's good. And the Providence section explodes. Edwards kicks up ahead, planet, and that one rejected. <laughs> good win to French in the throwdown. Planet had a great move after getting his first shot blocked. Turned into Dunk City. DeJure Dickens with another throwdown. Pismitis got it. Nicely done. The walk on from Greece. Good experience for both these two teams. Now St. Louis got a great win last night. They were unable to bring that same energy and same focus to tonight's game in large part because of the things Providence was able to do successfully. But still, this is an area where you think growth is coming for St. Louis. And Fox able to score. The bench loves it. Big smiles from him. Everybody who has checked in the game tonight for Providence has scored. 
What a great team victory. And Cooley said it was his deepest team, and it showed out in the last two games. The Friars are the champs. Providence wins it up next. College football, UNLV, and New Mexico. For Sean Farnham and our entire outstanding crew here at Madison Square Garden, I'm John Shelby saying so long from MSG. The Friars win the 2017 2K Classic.